Before we get going, I want to give a shout out to friend of the channel, Frumios Gaming, since they were the first subscriber to my new longplay channel. There, you can find my complete cast form run of Pokemon Emerald, and soon a lot of other gameplay I use to make these videos. Frumios is a fighting game beginner that does great breakdowns of different fighters to see how approachable they are to new players, along with other interesting topics like looking at the one-hit kill genre of fighting games, or all the retro fighters available on Nintendo Switch Online. Be sure to check out their channel linked in the description and pinned comment, along with my new longplay channel linked in those same places. Now let's get to Marvel. Well, I found people to play Marvel 2 with me. Now let's get into how that's been so far. The team I started with was Ken, Sentinel, Cyclops. Given that I was now learning three different characters instead of just one, I made a real point of trying to limit how much I tried to learn early on. With each character, I jotted down three combos to practice. A grounded string, an air string, and a combo into super. That made the learning process much more clear and naturally led to experimentation as I explored different magic series routes and ways to work assists into my combos. That was my first big execution challenge, learning how to time up calling for assists in the middle of a combo. Having the combo reps from Guilty Gear made it a lot easier to jump into this part of the process with a 2D fighter. Honestly, when I started learning Plus R, I put off learning some of Axel's basic combos because I didn't think I was good enough to start working on them. That wouldn't have been a thing if I had started with Soul Calibur 6 for the Diary series because I already had a ton of reps in the 3D space from playing Tekken 7, albeit mediocrely. Having confidence in my execution went a long way in setting me on the right foot, but Marvel 2 is a whole different ball game from Guilty Gear. It turns out that beginning my Marvel journey with a stubby, mid-tier character as my lead wasn't the best idea, despite how much I wanted it to be. Ken does not seem like a beginner-friendly character, because if he's not getting his launcher into Air Tatsu, something I didn't pull off once in a real match, it feels like he struggles everywhere else. His movement is okay, his projectile game isn't a thing, and he just overall seems like a character where you'd have to have a really good handle on the game's fundamental mechanics to get anywhere with him. His lack of range kills me. For a character that so heavily relies on his launcher to be effective, his stubby normals make it really difficult to find spots to confirm into his launcher. I thought I could overcome that early on, but with the pace of Marvel, I'm just not good enough to make this character work yet, and Ken is not a hill I'm willing to let my enjoyment of the game die on. So yeah, Ken was off the team pretty quickly. But before we move on to my hunt for his replacement, I did want to mention his Shoryu Repa super. It's way better than I expected. It feels like it starts up almost instantly and warps Ken right into the opponent if they're anywhere within half screen, and I've seen better Ken players use it as an interesting defensive tool. That move alone is reason to come back to Ken once I get better at the game. Cyclops and Sentinel, on the other hand, were really easy to get a feel for, and when it comes to creating their own offense, their floor is so much higher than Ken's to the point where it almost felt like I was playing a different game. Both have something really safe and spammable that you can use at a beginner level to reset your footing. For Cyclops, it's his standing light kick and crouching heavy punch. For Sentinel, it's his standing light punch and rocket punches. Plus, they've both got range and added movement. Sentinel, of course, has a bunch of options that'll go full screen, along with his fly state, while Cyclops has a variety of beams and a double jump. I thought it was going to be really difficult to get a handle on the strongest characters in Marvel, but at least for these two, it wasn't hard to find a simple game plan that worked at my beginner level, something that made sense. On to Ken's replacement. This was a fucking task, in large part because I was looking for the wrong answer. I initially tried to find a character that filled the original role I set for Ken, a non-top tier lead character that can come in and just do some stuff. Two problems with that. One, restricting myself to only picking from non-top tier characters was dumb. And two, I already had a character on the team that filled the void of a strong lead, Cyclops. Once I inevitably failed to do anything with Ken, I'd switch into Cyclops and get something going, which then restricted Ken to just being an anti-air assist. And if that's all Ken is on the team, I might as well go with a better anti-air assist. That's where Captain Commando comes in. I initially threw him on the team because I couldn't find a third member, and he seemed like a safe filler choice until I did, but I've since learned that I really like using him for more than just his amazing assist. Captain Commando feels like Ken, but for dummies. Commando's biggest weakness is that he can't do two hits into his launcher, the same issue I had with Ken. 
But in this case, I wasn't expecting him to be my main character on the floor. The expectation was for Cyclops and Sentinel to handle everything, while Cap gets in the opponent's way and never has to come in properly. Funny thing about that, I've actually really enjoyed using Cap for his own offense. Unlike Ken, Cap has a fireball that basically goes full screen, and it comes out pretty quickly. It's that simple option I couldn't find with Ken, and the rest of Cap's options are pretty neat too. This probably won't be something that lasts once the collective skill of the group rises and Cap's weaknesses at point really start to get exposed, but it's fun for now. As one of the people in our group chat said, me going with Captain Commando as my last character was the Marvel 2 equivalent of slapping Landorus Therian on a competitive Pokemon team. Of course it works. It always works. It's borderline idiot proof. Unless you're bad at using assists like I was. The biggest difficulty I've had while learning Marvel 2 so far has been how often I can call assists. I viewed my assists like any other resource and tried to really pick my spots so I didn't waste them. But these assists recover so damn fast. My only previous experience with assist characters was in the Naruto Storm games, and assists there take some time to recharge. But not here. Throw out an assist in Marvel 2, and they'll be good to go again almost immediately after they leave the screen. It's a massive part of what gives this game its famously fast pace. Unless there's a long combo in process, you're almost guaranteed to see at least three characters on the screen at the same time. Having such a powerful assist like Commando helped push me toward using them more, as did a few post-match chats in the group chat. Even if the chats aren't long, being able to converse with my opponents after the game has made them more fun. Whether it's general stuff about how we both feel learning the game, or some insight one of us gives the other, it's just nice. Like how one of the other Cyclops players pointed out to me that his crouching heavy punch projectile comes out a few frames faster than the standing version. This after they'd used it to beat me when we were both fighting at far range. If I notice something like that that could help them, I'll point it out too and we'll gradually raise each other's skill level. I think I approached Marvel 2 too much like Pokemon, where the slower pace of Pokemon games makes fitting in a niche pick far easier. Given Marvel's fast gameplay, I think I would have been better served picking two characters to learn and then making the last spot a dedicated assist. Psylocke, Tronbon, Thanos, or in this case Commando, just someone I could put on the back burner to learn later while they still helped the team in the moment. I'm glad I made this switch as early as I did. Ken was a cute choice that I'll probably get back to in the future, but for now, I'm having a lot more fun with this team now that Commando's taken his place. The setup of Commando Cyclops Sentinel feels a lot more flexible in terms of letting me experiment with other characters and not feeling like I have to heavily relearn the team structure. Juggernaut and Doctor Doom could both take Sentinel's place on the team pretty seamlessly in different ways, the former as another big body character with lots of health, and the latter as another flyer with projectiles. In the same vein, I could probably swap Cyclops with any of Spiral, Mega Man, Gambit, or Cable, and again have a pretty easy time finding the new team's groove. That's what made team games like Marvel 2 seem so interesting to me, the ability to experiment with a bunch of different team setups. Now not only have I found beginner-friendly ways to play these characters individually, I found a team combination that makes team experimentation beginner-friendly. I'm really enjoying learning Marvel 2 so far. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Then check out some of my other videos, two of which are linked on screen now. In the comments, I'd love to hear about which game has caught your eye lately, whether it's a fighting game or something completely different.